we feel that literally their their soul has been torn from us. We, we feel that internally. And the Jewish tradition notes that uh, physically, that when someone has died, that we tear our garments of clothing, an outer garment that we're wearing. The immediate circle of mourners in Jewish life would be a sibling, a spouse, a child, um, or a parent of God. And you represent, Vicki, you are the only one who's in that immediate circle. It's not that the rest of you aren't mourning and that there aren't circles of mourners outside of this space or outside of Vicki. But Vicki represent you, you are that immediate circle. And so you're wearing this ribbon. There's a name that we use for God when someone dies and it's used exclusively at death in Jewish life. The word you'll hear is that, Dayan Ha'emet. Dayan means judge. Emet is truth. And we call God as the one who's the judge of truth. And the word truth in Hebrew takes us through the entire Hebrew alphabet. Because the word truth, emet, starts with Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's got the letter mem, the M sound is the, one of the middle letters of the alphabet. And then it's got the last letter, tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And we think about this moment that we stand together at the end of Kay's life. We are here in this moment. She was right there for you at the very beginning of your life and for grandchildren and there's a great there are great grandchildren and great a great great grandchild as well. That she was at that Aleph and, and for many of you as you're remembering and thinking back, all those things she taught you during your mem, during your middle of your life. And that please God that carries you as you sojourn on. So, Vicki, I'm going to have you stand, especially if you can just keep your seat. If you are able to just stand right where you are, I'm going to give you a little bit of Hebrew. You're going to come back with us. Baruch Ata Adonai. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Dayan. Dayan. Ha'emet. Ha'emet. All of this means, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who is the judge of truth. And we can all say Amen. And then you're going to tear the ribbon from the bottom up, just enough to hear it rip a little bit. You'll hear it. And then you sit back down. I was struck, Vicki, as we were talking, of, you mentioned about how your grandma Minnie would share this line of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 with you at night if you were having a sleepover, whatever it was, and that you would recite the words of Shema, which is actually a line we say um, ideally every morning when we wake up and at night when we go to sleep. Um, so it's also something we say when someone dies or someone is approaching death. So for us to start by saying these words, as we call, listen, O Israel, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Adonai is our God, Adonai is one and the oneness of God which has us together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad We're going to frame that with this line from Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. You do not have it in front of you. Bring this in and then I'm going to give it with something else. Fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah is speaking a language that sounds very much like Psalm 27, which is what you have on the blue sheet in front of you. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27 is a psalm that we read during this time of year, when we're from the beginning of Elul through the end of Sukkot. We are right now in that time frame, getting ready for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. We read this because listen to what the psalmist, or imagine what the psalmist was going through when he writes these words. Adonai is my light and my life. Whom shall I fear? Adonai is the foundation of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, it is they, my adversaries and enemies, who stumble and fall. Should an army besiege me, my heart would not fear. Should a war rise against me, in this I trust. One thing I ask of Adonai, only this do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of Adonai all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Adonai to frequent his temple. For Adonai will conceal me in his sukkah, 
on an evil day and hide me in the shelter of his tent, raise me up high on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer sacrifices in God's tent with the sound of trumpets. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to Adonai. Now listen to this, flip over on to verse 7. Listen to this next verse. We just said, Shema Yisrael, listen, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Listen to what the psalmist says. Shema Adonai koli ekra v'choneni v'aneni. Listen, O God, my voice when I cry out. Have mercy on me and answer me. This is the relationship we have with God. We, God tells us, Moses, right, but on behalf of God, listen, O Israel, and so to we come forward and say, God, we need you to listen to us also. Listen to me as I call out in my despair, and, and I have not to fear because God is with me, but I'm still going to call and I really need you to listen. Of you my heart has said, I'm in verse 8, seek my face, your face out and I, I seek your face. Do not hide your face from me. Do not push aside your servant in anger. You've always been my help. Do not forsake me, do not abandon me, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother abandoned me, but Adonai will gather me in. Not that parents just up and leave us, but there is a time at the end of life that indeed our parents, if we, the word abandon is a very harsh translation, and it's not wrong, but it also can be read as, my parents have left me, and they died, and God will give us comfort. Oh God, my salvation. Teach me your way out and I and lead me on a level path because of my ever watchful foes. Do not deliver me to the desire of my enemies, to my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen up against me and a wicked witness. If I had not believed to look upon the goodness of God, I would no longer be in the land of the living. I'll read verse 14 together. Look to hope for Adonai. Be strong and of good courage. Look to hope for Adonai. So we gather this afternoon to perform the mitzvah of burial for your beloved Kay. While Kay's life in this world has ended, we pray she rests a peaceful rest with God. Our thoughts extend most definitely to this immediate circle of family, but far beyond as well. Our time together contains a variety of scriptural readings from the Hebrew Bible and beyond, and we reflect on these holy words as they register in our collective thoughts and sorrows and memories. I want you to turn to the, the white Xerox. We'll work off of that page now. First from Psalm 16. I have set the eternal always before me. God is at my side. I shall not be moved. Therefore does my heart exult and my soul rejoice. My being is secure. For you will not abandon me to death, nor let your faithful ones see destruction. You show me the path of life. Your presence brings fullness of joy, enduring happiness is your gift. Joshua Loth Liebman wrote these words about the nature of the soul. Judaism is the religion of life, which makes no cult out of death, which seeks no private salvation from the grave, which accepts with confidence and trust both the miracle of birth and the mystery of death. Our faith does not close its eyes to tragedy and does not deny that we human beings shall never possess the everlastingness of stone the silence perduring quality of the mountain peak. We have other gifts, conscious minds, aspiring hearts, far visioned souls. Our faith tells us that God has given to each human being the ability to paint a portrait, large or small, beautiful or ugly, radiant or blooming. And our faith summons us to become a portrait painter of a soul landscape that should be worthy to be hung in any art gallery of the spirit. Imagine the gallery where his soul painting. Judaism proclaims that God has arranged our journey so that in years brief or many we can find love, joy, and the fruits of fulfillment, partial and relative though they be, and that when our day is finished we should accept its final note with the same calm trust that we greet the Skylark's song at sunrise. Ecclesiastes knew from the cycle of life and time 
you go through this passage from Ecclesiastes 3, I invite you to think of those moments where they resonate for you. And you think of where I did that with him. For every time and season to every longing beneath the heavens there is a time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break apart and a time to build. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time of lamenting and a time of dancing. A time to cast away stones and a time of gathering stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to let go. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time of, to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Third Psalm. You'll hear echoes from the words of Psalm 27, as well as a little bit of that flavor from Isaiah as well. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo hasar, binoteshi yarbitseni, almei minochot ina haleni, nafshi yishobev, yancheni b'magne tzedek lema'an shemo, gam ki elech b'vet salmavet, lo irara, yataim adi, shiv t'chao mishantech lahem ayanach hamuni, ta'aroch lafanai shulchan neget zoharai, Dishanta Vashem lo roshi kosi ravaya, achto vachesed yurdefuni kol yamei chayai, v'shavti v'vet Adonai l'orech yamin. We'll share these words of Psalm 23 together. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Rabbi Alvin Fine of Blessed Memory wrote, Birth is a beginning, and death a destination. But life is a journey, a going, a growing, from stage to stage, from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to, to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength, or from strength to weakness, and often back again, from health to sickness, and we pray to help again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, from fear to faith. From defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backwards or ahead we see that victory lies not at some high point along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage, made stage by stage, birth, death, life, everlasting. During this sacred hour, we arrive drawn by ties that bind our soul to yours. Death has separated us. You are no longer at our side to share the beauty of the passing moment. We cannot look to you to lighten our burdens, to lend us your strength, your counsel, your faith. And yet what you mean to us neither withers nor fades. For a time we touched hands and hearts, still your voice abides within us. Still your tender glance remains a joy to us, for you are part of us forever. Something of you has become a deathless song upon our lips, and so beyond the ache that tells us how much we miss you, a deeper thought compels we were together. We hold you still in our minds and give thanks for life and love. The happiness that was, the memories that do not change, are a gift that cannot be lost. Continue to bless our days and years. We will always give thanks to you. Esa <laughs> 
that comes in the book of Proverbs in chapter 31. It's known as a woman of valor, Asha Tile. Not sure how Kay would feel about us reading this about her. She might be too <coughs> modest for it. But when you hear the words, you'll recognize why the words fit for this woman. Asha Tile mi yimsa, barachot mi inim nikra, batach ba lev ba lav shalal lo yachsar. A woman of valor who can find. She is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband trusts in her, and so he lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm, all the days of her life. She perceives that her labor is rewarding. Her candle burns on into the night. She reaches out to those in need and extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is on her lips. Her children and children and onward, rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel them all. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yishem Adonai Mevorah. God is given, God is taken away. Blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us, yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. God, you gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten for all that was good and enduring in Kay's life. We offer the, deep, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakah, God you've taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love, as we say, Yishem Adonai Mevorah, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. Hannah K. Goldberg, Burke Backer. <laughs> the woman everyone knew was Kay sure had a lot of names. I realized at the end of life she was simply Kay Backer. But I think the full list tells a greater story and the trajectory of her life. Her first name was Grace. Well, it's Hannah, which is Hebrew for grace or gracious. Could her parents have chosen a better name for this woman? Hannah, Hannah is the biblical character who becomes an important example of prayer to God, of someone who takes her faith, her community, seriously. I'd be curious how it came to be that Hannah, as a name, became second to Kay, which none of us can imagine her being anything other than Kay. Kay Backer was a lady. She was a true Southern Jewish lady. She was quaffed, had an opinion, and didn't mind letting you hear it, and always called you darling. Being in Kay's presence made you feel good, made you sit up straight, made you feel appreciated. Being in Kay's presence was to know warmth and love and understanding. Kay cared. She cared about her family, she cared about her community, she cared about politics, she even had a deep interest and obsession perhaps with frogs and butterflies. Kay was born July 14, 1926, which was during the week when we start reading from the book of Deuteronomy in our annual cycle of reading from Torah. Deuteronomy is so quotable because it contains the major closing speeches of Moses before he dies and the Israelites are about to enter into the promised land. In Deuteronomy, Moses offers the words, I set before you this day blessing and curse, life and death. I tell you, choose life that you may live it. 
Moses, who's really speaking on behalf of God, wants to encourage us to take life by the reins and realize that we have some control here. Not total control, but life and love, blessing and hope are what will fuel us and propel us into a better tomorrow. Moses will not enter the promised land, but he wants to make sure we make good choices moving forward. Kay started life in Danville, Virginia, was in Roanoke for a short while, and then as a teen came to Winston-Salem. She and Fred met while Fred was on leave from the Air Corps. Kay was invited over to her friends to Pauline Paris's, who wanted Kay to meet her handsome cousin. And within a matter of a few short weeks, they were all set to be married. When Kay came back from meeting Fred, she announced that she had met her man for the rest of her life. Telling that story would make her face light up as she thought about her Fredic. Fred and Kay's grandchildren loved their grandfather so much that you even felt your grandfather and father was a male angel on earth with a level of compassion you don't often sense in men. He would help anybody, anytime. Fred was your forever hero. And while he was tender and sweet, your beloved Kay could be a bit rougher and gruffer. She would speak her mind, make sure you understood her side. It wasn't that she loved you any less. It actually was just her way of telling you how much she loved you, that she had to help you understand what she felt or what she thought. When Fred died in 1991, Kay mourned her handsome husband and dove into volunteering, particularly with her longtime her longtime friend, Jeanette Dillebeau, Jeanette Dillebeau, of blessed memory, at the hospital. They would make sure to volunteer on Christmas and Easter to help Christian, the Christian community observe their holidays. In 2004, when she was at a funeral, and it might have even been at the cemetery, she happened to run in to Dick Backer. And although she insisted, when they went out afterwards, it's not a date, they were just going for a meal. Four years later, Marriage was the most logical outcome, and thankfully, Vicki, you were able to help Dick convince your mother of what was right. They were able to still support their teams of Duke and Wake Forest, and agreed on politics as evidenced by their bumper sticker collection. They had eight good years, and they loved each other so much. Kay would always say how lucky she was to have married two such good men. You're all feeling a loss today. I want to mention you, Alberta, in particular, as you've known this family and you've been a part of this family for 70 years. You've been a fixture and a rock in this family throughout the generations. That literally, your name is mentioned with kavod, with respect, on account of your integrity, dedication, love, and compassion. The rabbis of old say that there are three crowns, the crown of kingship, the crown of the priesthood, and the crown of Torah. But the crown of a good name rises above them all, they teach us. You have so earned that crown of a good name in this family. And today, with Kay's funeral, we come to remember the death of a matriarch in this family. But we state, as well, the treasured space and place that you have in this family, dare I say, as a matriarch as well. Vicki, your loss is great with your mother's death. She and your beloved father literally preserved, protected, and made possible your life. You were an adopted baby, making you a special baby, but you came from such dire straits into the arms of two loving, nurturing souls who clearly adored you. You grew up in a time in Jewish Winston-Salem when there was an incredible connection between the families and the temple. Your parents were integral to the centrality and the development during those years from the paint shop to Oakwood Drive. You palled around with all those names whom we are surrounded with this afternoon at the cemetery and you've already walked around. Resnick and Sosnick and Brenner and Klein and Davis, all of the names you mentioned. The Goldbergs were a central part of that story and how blessed we continue to be to this day because of those families, including your own. The temple gave a place of belonging when the world around did not include or allow for Jews. The families all created their own country club, would play cards together, and even go on vacation together. The temple was the central and galvanizing place for faith and for community. No synagogue survives because of one person, nor does a community. It takes many people. And the Goldbergs were among those people. And when I picture our sanctuary, I can so readily picture Kay sitting in the pews, which was a home to her. 
Vicky, as your parents were there for you, so you've been there for your mom. And I know that transitioning from this role of caregiver to mourner is not an easy one. But as you've taken care of your mom, your own daughter, Jennifer, has learned and done the very same for you. Mark and Karen have also been right there along the way on this path. And Jason, although from far away, your support and love stretches over the miles. As you yourself said, Grandma was one of those people who lives on in your heart. There may be an absence of body, but her presence lives joyfully in my heart. Such as it is. When someone like Kay comes along in our lives and we are fortunate enough to be in her circle, particularly in her familial circle, that soul is, as we say, bound up in the bond of eternal life. Eternal life with God, but eternal life with the generations. The soul lives on forever, and so will the love and the memories. As long as you all carry those stories, and the values, and the teachings, and the glances, and the grateful living, and the commitment to life, love, and community forward. She was born during the week of Deuteronomy's starting to be read, and she died near the very end of the book's closing, which is the close of the whole Torah. We have, each of us, been in the presence of a woman who chose life and blessing and has blessed this circle and beyond with life and with love. Moving towards lands of promise in each of your own ways, may you be comforted among the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem, and may the memory of Hannah K. Goldberg Burke Backer be for a blessing. A moment of our own private, quiet, silent prayer. unto the mountains. Where does my help come? My help comes from Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. May the words of our mouths, the meditations in our hearts, be acceptable unto you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. I stood at the cemetery many times before, and many times I've been here with Kay. It's rare to have a beautiful day as beautiful as this today. But how perfect for such a beautiful woman. How just right. We were talking about what was her Hebrew name. You said you didn't know? Okay. So I've had that story happen before. We, we talked about the fact, well, her father's name was Joe, so Joseph, so Yosef in Hebrew. That's not a problem. So I can do K bot Yosef. K, the daughter of Joseph. Not that her mother doesn't count, but we, the father's name is the one that we often will go with. And then I see that her first name is Hannah. Okay then, Hannah is more than likely her Hebrew name that she was given. You'll hear me chant a prayer in a moment in which I will utter and say her name. And it is calling upon God who is filled with compassion and mercy. And it is our belief that our soul, our breath, is breathed into us when we're born. And when we die, it returns back to the source of life from which it came. And so in this prayer, we're saying to God, with your mercy, bring in this soul, and that's all I'll name her at that time. As you're able, if you're comfortable to stand, for El Malay Rachamim, I invite you to do so at this time, if you're able to stand. If you need to be seated, that's okay. Right? Hamitzem nuchanechonah 
Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Hannah Bat Yosef, who has entered eternity. God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence beneath the shadow of your wings. And let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. You give us loved ones and make them the strength of our life and the light of our eyes. They depart and leave us bereft on the lonely way, but you are the living fountain from which our healing flows. To you the stricken look for comfort and the sorrow laden for consolation. O oh God, we see life as through windows that open on eternity. We see that love endures and the soul endures as you, O oh God, endure forever. We see that the years are more than grass that withers, more than flowers that fade. They be the timeless pattern in a world that is the dwelling place of your love and glory. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Yatsar Etchem B'Tzalmo, Vezan V'Chilkel Etchem B'Tuvo, V'Hemit Etchem B'Din, V'Nata B'Tochem Chai Olam. We praise you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who forms us in the divine image, who nourishes and sustains us in your goodness and who causes all of us to die and who implants immortal life within us. Eternal is your might, O God, all life is your gift. Great is your power to save. With love you sustain the living. And with great compassion you give life to all. You send help to the falling and healing to the sick. You bring freedom to the captive. Keep faith with those who sleep in the dust. We praise you, O God, who implants eternal life within us. Come on, come over Shalom. May Hannah K. 
Kate Goldberg Burke Backer, come to her eternal home in peace. The dust returns to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it. It is only the house of the spirit which we now lay within the earth. The spirit itself cannot die. Receive in mercy, O God, the soul of our departed K. Grant her that everlasting peace which you have prepared for us in the world to come. That no human eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has grasped it. Still it is our sure inheritance and our everlasting portion. O God, help us to understand that grief and love go hand in hand. That the pain which loss afflicts in us is the measure of love, is a measure of love stronger than death. Though we cry in the anguish of our hearts, may we be like children who know that their parents is near, and who cling unafraid to the trusted hand. In this spirit, O God, do we commit all that is precious to us, to your keeping, as we repeat words hallowed by the generations. The words of Kadi Shatoma on page four in the, the white series. I would like to join in these words in which we sanctify God's name, Kadi Shatoma, the mourner's Kaddish. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash, Shemer Rabba, Belma Divara, Hirute, Yamlich Malkute. Bachaye Khon, Yome Khon, Ubachaye the Holbeit Israel, Bagalao Bizman Kari Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mevarach Le Alamola Me Al Maya, Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Vit Paar, Vit Roman, Vit Nase, Vit Adar, Vit Ale, Vit Alal, Shemed Kudisha, Boricho, Leila Minkol, Birchata, Bishirata, Dush Bechata, Venechemata, the Amiran Be Alma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Amin Shemaya, Bechaim Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom Bimromav, Uya Se Shalom, Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. May God grant peace to those who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved among us, and let us say, Amen. As we go to place earth inside the grave this time, you're invited to do so if you want to participate in the mitzvah of doing that. That's fine. If not, that is all right. Um, when we use the shovel today, we're using it in a very different capacity than we normally would. Um, so the custom is that we use the back side of the spade first. And just put a little bit of the earth in. And then you do three shovels in. Um, if you're comfortable to participate. You're welcome to do so if you would be the first one. Just be careful as you're coming by the grave. You're going to skip a little bit of dust. So it's not okay. Remember that when you shovel soft, you can keep building up. All part of the creative part of the process of life.
the rabbis teach us that when God fashioned Adam from the clay of the earth, that God fashioned Adam from earth that came from the four corners of the earth. So no matter where we wind up in life, we are at one with the earth when we get buried back inside of it. There's always kind of that sense. And yet for us as Jews, we know that Israel is our home. And so I have earth from Israel to place in as well, to remind us of our connection that we have with our people's ancient and modern land. Closing prayer at this time. Lay. She lost the cloud tonight. Go your way for God has called you. Lech Badanai Yema. Go your way and may God be with you. May your righteousness go before you and the glory of God receive you. Ribbono Shalalam, Master of the Universe. You give us loved ones who bring us life and light and joy and laughter, teaching and wisdom, smiles, warmth and kindness. For all that was good and enduring and blessed in the life of Kay, we thank you from our hearts and may her memory continue to inspire and bless and touch all those in this circle and so far beyond with her kindness that she brought forward. May her memory be for a blessing. May you all find comfort in your days of mourning ahead. I wish you it's over I'm to you. A quiet and a peaceful afternoon. May Kay's memory be for a blessing. And let us all say, Amen. You're all welcome to stay here graveside as long as you like. Just take your time. I'm so grateful that we could be together and mark this moment with each other. Good to be with you. You know where to find me if you need me. Albert, I'm so glad to meet you. Everyone else too, of course. But, yeah. Thank you, Reverend.